possible. It just means it's the most challenging part. And then the last would be, I'd say, getting everybody in the organization to see the big picture of what we are all about, what we're trying to achieve. And uh, But if that if, if they're not getting the big picture, maybe it's my fault or the CEO's fault because that's our job is to explain the big picture. So those are my thoughts. You know, as, as your management progresses and from junior to middle to senior, then, then you have to give them more authority, more latitude. You have to let them make mistakes. Uh, pretty much we try to promote uh, uh, almost to 100% of the time from within. I think it's good. Uh, it uh, leads to um, it, great employee morale. It shows that if you work at our organization, if you continue your education and you mentor with the right individuals, uh, provided there's a job track that you'll be able to, to, to seek a higher uh, level of responsibility within our organization. When you're the CEO, you get to set strategies and tactics. When you're middle management, you typically don't. You may have input on that, but you're not going to be the final authority on what is the strategy going to be, how's the capital going to be allocated, what are these budgets going to look like. You may have a piece of that, but you're not likely to be able to sign off on the overall strategy of the company. One of the hardest things is that figuring out how to unlock the complete potential of your employees because if you think about every employee that works for you, if you could unlock their total potential, then you would be unstoppable. Nobody could stop you in business. A lot of times uh, you don't know what's going on. And so that's an important uh, fact that you have to rely on the senior management people and you have to trust them and they have to trust you, frankly. They have to feel you're on their side and you're willing to listen to their input. You may not agree, but you're willing to listen. I asked him what was the biggest challenge in your career and he says the one thing he wishes he could have done better or do over was people decisions. When you have talented people who have been with you for years and who have done very well but they're not going to be able to make that next step or you do not deem them in a position to make that next step or to broaden their responsibility, he said I, I took too long in trying to think in giving them a chance and seeing what to do. So those difficult people decisions at a senior level are something that uh, he pointed out was very difficult, and I, I would agree with that. And well, act, uh, actually, my daddy used to say, he said, son, he says, the worst, the worst decision you can make is the indecision to make a decision. So that's, that's my, that's my I advice. I received from, and it was from my, from my dad, and uh, probably he received it from his father, was uh, let people have room to run, uh, particularly if you're working in an organization, in sales, or any organization, let people have room to run, let them, let them feel that they're able to, to grow on their own, help them. If they want to take a little bit of a leap, then let them do that. Uh, but then help them and make sure that they don't fall. His phrase was, he said, just stay in the traffic. Meaning if you're in the traffic and ideas are around you all the time, here's an idea you grab onto, here's an idea, here's an idea. You meet somebody, you read something, you travel, you see something. His idea is if you're not in the traffic, you're not going to see any new ideas. You're not going to learn a lot sitting in your living room, but you might see something new out there if you're in the field. Uh, the other, other things, uh, words of wisdom really is to just kind of get, uh, I think you've heard it from the table, there's, there's sales, there's construction, there's all kinds of experience out here, but I think it's being close to your product, uh, needing, needing to know, you know what is it that drives your business. And in my business, it's healthcare, and it changes all the time. As far as if, if we had 30 seconds in an elevator, I would tell you rage against inertia. And it's somewhat related to what Kirk was saying. Rage against inertia. Just because something worked for you last year or last week doesn't mean that's the best way to do something. So always in your business and in what you're doing, think, is there a better way to do this? Never assume that you're doing it the best way because somebody else would do it better and you want to stay ahead of them. So I would say rage against inertia. You said about you know, the course of your company, I think the hardest part of any CEO is, is kind of like the captain of a ship or the pilot of an airplane. I mean, you're basically in charge and where you turn it is where it's going to go. So